And I think this is such a great time to step back and say, what is it that we've always done and why? You know, revisiting your brand, who your customers are, what are they hungry for today? What are they really gonna be hungry for tomorrow? And I think catering to that is gonna make a huge difference. It's going to be the difference between the companies that use this moment wisely and the companies that lose when all of this is over. Hey everyone, this is Shema Hyder here and I wanted to talk about a topic that I've been getting a lot of questions around, which is what does post COVID world look like, you know, in terms of marketing to our customers, this business world, what are we going into? And I think this is such a fabulous question. In fact, I just spoke last week to a reporter from uh, the American Marketing Association and they were doing a whole piece on, you know, what happens to companies whose conferences have been canceled and trade shows have been canceled. You know, how do, the, how do these people still continue to get these meetings that they had set up? And, you know, it really dawned on me that I think what everyone is trying to do or so many companies are trying to do is they're still trying to force a round peg into a square hole <laughs> um, or vice versa. You know, they're really trying to make something work that worked for the world before, but doesn't make sense now. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's a really good time to step back and say, we've been doing these things because of and fill in the blank. And so many times when I ask this question about, oh, why are you going to this trade show to this company, for example, they'll respond with, oh, well, that's that's what we've always done. And I think this is such a great time to step back and say, what is it that we've always done and why? And you know, asking that question about why and you know, revisiting your brand, who your customers are, what are they hungry for today? What are they really gonna be hungry for tomorrow? And I think catering to that is gonna make a huge difference. It's going to be the difference between the companies that use this moment wisely and the companies that lose when all of this is over because they haven't really focused, you know, they haven't sat back and said, okay, great time to reevaluate where we are, where we want to be. So, you know, I was thinking about what's the framework, right, look like for this new age. And uh, I wanted to give you some parameters, some, some things to help you really think about what this, you know, post COVID world is gonna look like, um, at least for the near term future. You know, eventually things may go back to uh, a different kind of normal. I don't wanna say, you know, what we've, where we've always been, but I think these guideposts will really help you as you think about where you want your, your career, your brand to move into the future. So I've got three R's for you and then three C's because I, I just find that it really helps to remember information like that right so here's the three R's you need to keep in mind the first is repetitive this is going to be absolutely key and did I say this is gonna be absolutely key <laughs> see what I did there a little a repetition for you because the noise is just so mind-boggling right now and it's not just the external noise of the media it's all our internal chatter too people need repetition more than ever before so if you ever thought, man, we're out there a little too much. First of all, there's no such thing as that. Um, be rest assured that repetition is going to be your best friend. You know, sometimes I get the question where people say, well, if we post too much on social media, isn't that a bad thing? And I, you know, my answer to that always is no, it's never a bad thing because the way algorithms are set up and everything, even if you put your message out there a hundred times a day, chances are that you aren't reaching your entire target market. It's just not possible. And so, you know, as long as, of course, it's quality content, then repetition is gonna be really important. If you email your list once a month, email them weekly. And again, I don't mean repetition for the sake of repetition, but really making sure that your message is out there consistently, right? That consistent visibility is gonna be so much more important than it ever was just because you're gonna to have to work harder to cut through that noise. The second R I have for you is real. You know, I think one of the cool things that's happened during this COVID uh, crisis is that we've all just had uh, the, the ability and perhaps the excuse to be more real. 
And uh, what I mean by that is, you know, we've done work calls in jeans and in t-shirts and we've cut cut away, we've done away with frivolous meetings that perhaps we were like one of those, why did we keep doing this meeting for? You know, and, uh, and I think it's interesting because I think we've been able to see our colleagues and our clients and our vendors in a more three-dimensional light. I think so many times when you're working with someone, it's easy to just see them as the work person and not for, you know, the fullness, the richness, I think, that life has to offer. The other day I had my nine-month-old son and I apologized on the call and I said, I'm sorry, I have my nine month old son here in case you hear him, you know, babbling in the background. And my client immediately said, well, don't worry about it. I've got my two year old here and there's only so long I can keep them distracted. So, you know, it's been really nice to bond with people, I think, beyond just the work me or the personal me. Um, and I think we'll see more of this blend. So in terms of your marketing, the more real you can make it, the more authentic it is, I think the more it will resonate with people. And this is your moment. Um, you know, I, I just think there's some brands out there right now that are that are doing this extremely well. They are leveraging the fact that things are more real than ever. And these are the brands that I think are making some um, some awesome you know, awesome decisions and uh, and are moving forward in a way that their customers feel like they're connecting with them, right? So here's a great example. I saw this video that Carter's did. So if you're a parent, you're familiar with Carter's. They do uh, children's clothing. And, you know, this was such a great video because they filmed all the kids of their employees in their homes and they had this fun little you know, song that they put together about how mommy and daddy were home or piggyback rides. It was just so touching and beautiful, but it was real, right? It wasn't a, a it, it wasn't overly scripted. Uh, it wasn't something that, it wasn't a commercial, right? And it would have been a great commercial, but I think it really spoke to the realness that we're all facing right now. And you think about, uh, you know, the good news show with uh, John Krasinski, which has been Cool. I mean, he's this guy's doing this show from home and he's got, you know, celebs uh, coming on board, too. And and of course, it's just fun because you get to see the real and he's showcasing good news from all over all over the world. Interesting things that are happening. So I think that hunger for real, uh, wholesome, pure is very much still there and will continue to be. So the third R is going to be relevant And this goes you know, to my first message as well, you can be repetitive, but you want to make sure it's relevant because let's say that you do get someone's attention. Boy, you better make sure that if you've gotten their attention, it's, they feel like, wow, this was worth giving my attention to, right? So I think this idea of just doing something for the sake of grabbing someone's attention just doesn't work anymore. I think you really have to think about, you know, how is this relevant to my audience at this very minute? And so the three R's, being repetitive, being real, and staying relevant. These three R's are going to be, I think, the foundation, this new framework of, uh, of how we move forward. And, uh, you know, my buddy Chris Brogan used a great analogy. He said, it's like we're building on the sand. And I think that's so true, which is you know, things are very fluid right now. But within that fluidity, without that sense of control and static, we're able to create something really beautiful. And I think there's something really powerful about that. All right, so I gave you the three R's. Here's now the three C's, which I think are also going to help. Um, again, think of these as guideposts, the framework for our new world. So the first is compact, right? Very simply, um, the shorter something can be, the better. And I know there's all this stuff about, well, if something's longer, people will still enjoy it. And yes, that's true. But I think more than ever before, people want to know, you know, what's what's the bottom line? How can I, you know, can this, is this a tweetable, right? Can I get something in a quicker, faster format? And so I think the more you can compact, think about how you can get your messaging to be sharper, snappier, it'll make a big difference. You know, we, uh, we at Zen, for example, we say, if you have a moment, we provide the momentum. So simple as that. So think about how you can make your messaging, everything that you're doing as compact as possible without, of course, losing the value. There is such a thing. And then, of course, the second C is contactless. I think it's going to be a long time before we're comfortable 
hugging strangers, handshakes with people, um, keeping that distance for good reason. And so we think contactless is definitely going to be the norm. Um, think about restaurants when you go in, right? You're not going to be wanting a menu that's been touched by how many people you're going to ideally be able to pull the menu up on your own on your own phone. Um, One Dine, which is a leader in restaurant technologies, is doing an amazing job. They're leading, I think, right now the the contactless revolution in the restaurant field. Which, by the way, if you're a restaurant, definitely check them out. One Dine. Dot com. They're making their technology free, absolutely free right now for restaurants while uh, while everything is happening. So, you know, make sure you're you're ready for when you do reopen. This is true for retailers out there too. Uh, contactless, touchless, that's really going to be the norm, um, at least for the near future. So even if you have a, have a, um, if you have a retail location, think about, you know, your lobby. Think about how you're set up in your location to create more contactless interactions that require less touch. And the third C I think is really gonna be collaborative, uh, which I'm excited about. I think we're gonna see a lot more creation and collaboration where before it just wasn't considered um, a done thing. And you know, speaking of brands who are leveraging this moment, I think Pepsi really did great while they were in the news for cutting their marketing what they're really doing is just, again, using these principles to say, where do we focus best? And they're being collaborative. They've sponsored the John Krasinski's Good uh, Good News show that I was talking about earlier. So I think we're going to see a lot more collaborations, a lot more people teaming up with influencers, both in B2B and B2C. So these are my guideposts for you for, I think, what's going to happen as business reopens and where your marketing really needs to be. So let me rephrase that for you. Uh, Three R's and three C's. So the first is repetitive. If you feel like you've said it too many times, I promise you, you haven't. Your marketing needs to cut through all this bull jive right now. It needs to be repetitive. Two, it needs to be real. I think it's it's nice. We're starting to see people and organizations become less of undimensional. And I think that's a wonderful thing. And your customers are going to expect more of this. Three, relevant. Make sure that your message your brand, the things that you are putting out there are relevant to your customers. No more of this getting attention for the sake of getting attention. And then my three C's, right? Compact, make sure that whatever it is can be understood quickly. It's snappy, it's clear, it's concise. And then contactless. Um, I think for the near future, we're going to need to be, you know, less, less contact. And I am a Texas girl. I love I love handshakes and hugs, and so this is going to be hard, but we're going to get through it together. So if you have a restaurant, if you have any kind of actual physical location, think how you can encourage more contactless because it'll make your customers feel safer. And then collaborative. I think we're going to see a great uh, renaissance of brands collaborating with influencers, with creators, with uh, more creativity that I think we've, we've seen in a minute just as, you know, whenever things slow down in this way, uh, creativity flourishes. So these are my, um, I think, you know, hallmarks for your guideposts and the framework for where I believe that marketing and business is really headed. So get your ducks in order. This is, this is your time. This is your moment. Absolutely own it.